Oh, I was just gonna put this up. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. I might have to. I'm good. Aside from being parked completely illegally, I'm fine. <laughs> oh. Huh? That's me every other day. I know, right? It's like, what are you going to do, man? <laughs> you know? Hopefully this will not be lengthy, so... Sure, one, two, three, one, two, three, okay. I know that they were, I mean, they had had three press conferences in a row, yeah, and they knew they weren't going to get any attention yesterday, I think, yeah. so. Just a few mics up there, yeah.
Oh, does not like it here. He does not like bars. Yeah. Let's go for it.
That's why there was nowhere to park. Be worse.
about every station in the state is here, comma, I think, period. Good morning, everybody. Well, good morning. As of yesterday, this became the worst kept secret in Raleigh, I think. I uh, want to welcome everyone here today with us. Uh, we have a number of our colleagues, of course, here standing with us, as well as a lot of colleagues here uh, in the back. I'm very proud to be here today to uh, join my colleagues and uh, our, my newest uh, Republican colleague, who will be making her official announcement shortly, uh, to our caucus. Uh, you know, I've had the pleasure of serving with Representative Cotham since she was first elected in 2006. Uh, I've been here since 2002. I've served in the minority, and I've served in the majority. Let me tell you, the majority is better. Uh, and I will tell you that even when I was in the minority and Representative Cotham was in the majority, she was always one of the most bipartisan members who would work with us a great deal. 
Dan probably can speak to that when he comes up as well. But it's, it was amazing to me that in the, you know, in the last few weeks, uh, the conversations that, that I had with Representative Cotham, it did seem that she, like so many, uh, were, were seeing that uh, perhaps uh, she didn't have as much of a home in her former party as, as she did. One of the things that we pride ourselves on as Republicans is that we always tell our caucus members, vote your conscience, <coughs> vote your district, and then vote with your caucus. That's a, that's a hallmark we have. And you can see that regularly. We, we had a vote, uh, what, three weeks ago on the Medicaid bill where our caucus was, you know, split. But you know what? We had our vote. Everybody had their piece, and we moved on. Nobody attacked each other in the media. Nobody went after each other. We understand that having a big tent with ideas across the spectrum is what makes not just a party healthy, but it's what makes governing effective because North Carolina is that way. And the new modern face of the Republican Party is one that represents the values and the views of most of North Carolina. So in the last few weeks, as I was talking with Representative Cotham, I got a sense that she was uh, unhappy, felt like she maybe was having to vote against her conscience in a lot of ways. Uh, and so, you know, told her that we'd love to have you. And by the way, she's not the only Democrat that we've had great conversations with. And because I think a lot of folks, you just see it's a national move where folks realize that, um, that, that there's this wokeness, whatever you want to call it, has pervaded in a lot of ways. And there are a lot of folks on the other side of the aisle, I think, who are frustrated within their own party. But knowing Representative Cotham, knowing her commitment to, to Mecklenburg County and to North Carolina, she put, she put policy over politics. Uh, she's been very principled. And so when she expressed an interest in, in talking with us, of course, I said yes. And we are honored today to have with us our newest member of the Republican Caucus, uh, Representative Tricia Cotham. Tricia, thank you. Good morning, and thank you for being here. I am Tricia Cotham. I am a single mom of two amazing sons, a teacher, a small business owner, a woman with strong faith, a national championship basketball coach, and a public servant. Today, I add Republican to that list. <laughs> decided to change my party affiliation joining the Republican Party and have been welcomed with open arms by my colleagues and I'm glad to call you all my colleagues. As long as I have been a Democrat, the Democrats have tried to be a big tent. But this now where we are, modern day Democratic Party, has become unrecognizable to me and to so many others throughout this state and this country. The party wants to villainize anyone who has free thought, free judgment, has solutions, who wants to get to work to better our state, not just sit in a meeting and have a workshop after a workshop, but really work with individuals to get things done, because that's what real public servants if you don't do exactly what the Democrats want you to do, they will try to bully you. They will try to cast you aside. I saw that when I first filed for office and was told, why didn't you ask for our permission? I didn't think I needed to do that as a female. And quite frankly, I was offended. But when I came back to this legislature, I knew times were different and things had changed. I also knew that I was different. I had been through a lot in life, and so I am just different too, and I'm proud of that. It became very clear to me early on in January that you better vote in line with everything Governor Cooper tells you to do, from signing on to bills, to he wanted to pick your seat on the House floor, 
to your committee requests, all of this sense of control. I will not be controlled by anyone. I have always been a free thinker, a woman of faith, a person of independent judgment, and of common sense. I have always tried to work across the aisle from day one. And I'm proud of that work because that means we are working together as statesmen and stateswomen. Unfortunately, that is talk in the Democratic Party that that's a good thing, but there is little action when it comes to that. And if I do that, I was considered a traitor, I was told, a spy. Please don't come to, to caucus. You'll tell everything we know. That is a terrible mentality, and that's just wrong of what's happening in politics. I've suffered many attacks since I've been up here from Democrats in the party, from blasting me on Twitter to calling me names, to going after my family, going after my children. That is wrong, and I will not stand for that. I will not be bullied by them, and I will protect my children and my family. <laughs> One of the absolute worst moments, which was a deal breaker, a, a turning point for me, was when I was criticized for using the American flag and the praying hands emoji on all my social media platforms and even on the back of different vehicles that I have. I really could not believe that was the conversation that was happening at that time. And I was deeply offended. Um, I am proud to be an American. I am proud of our country. I am proud of the men and women in my family who have served. To say that that is wrong and not to be able to show off a flag because the others hijack it for something else. Why are we at this place in politics? That is really unacceptable and needs to change. I want to be a part of that change agent for the greater good of our state, for the greater good of all the public servants behind me and all back there. I firmly believe that it is my responsibility as a legislator to learn everything I can, to ask questions, to hear perspectives before deciding how to vote. When did Democrats become so afraid of independent thought? Because they're definitely not encouraging it at all. Perhaps they don't like what they can't control. It became very clear to me this was about control on day one at the legislature. They picked the wrong chick for that. <laughs> they have pushed me out. They have made it very clear from the day I filed back in March of last year that they did not want me and tried to do everything they could to defeat me. They have lied on me. Women in the House caucus have said vicious and started vicious rumors that are very hypocritical of other stances that they make, attacking me on Twitter, in person to my face, attacking my mother, and saying something to my boys. That is wrong and hypocritical. Some have sent threatening messages to me. Interest groups and lobbying groups that are aligned with the Democrat Party have directly sent messages to my 12-year-old son. And that needs to stop. And it's not just been one time. One of the worst moments was when I took my little boy to Target. And you know, you go to Target, it inspires you. You see what you might need to buy, you never know. And so we were exploring different things, looking at RC cars and Nerf guns. And out of nowhere, a woman came, and she cussed me out, up and down, screaming at me. 
trying to remain composure in that moment, but most importantly, protecting my son, my baby. And for him to have to witness that and see how a grown woman would act and try to even explain it was wrong. But children teach us the best lessons, and they really help us in moments like this because my son used my iPad and wrote me the sweetest note. I don't even know how to write notes on my iPad. <laughs> I'm sure he can teach me. But just encouraging me, he recognized this and said how wrong it was. Those are just a few events. Go on Twitter right now. See all the threats against me. See the hypocrisy. See the, the attack lines inciting, encouraging violence on me. That's what's happening. It's all over right now. So they can keep bullying me. People say, does it bother you? It bothers me that they're hypocritical. Yes. This is not the place for in politics. This doesn't help women in politics because they have a tendency, even though they say they're the party of women, they certainly will slice and dice you in a second with malicious, vicious, untrue rumors and do not celebrate your success. And these women behind me from day one, we have become very close. These are my girls, as I like to say, but I am lucky now to be a part of a real group of men and women who believe in me. I'm not a politician. I'm no longer a Democrat. But I remain a public servant. That is what I am called to do. The party that best represents me and my principles and what's best for North Carolina is the Republican Party. It's an honor to be here today. I thank you all so very much. Glad to be on the team. Next, next we'll hear from Congressman Bishop. Dan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, Sorry, my appearance somewhat detracts from the moment. I, um, I tore my Achilles tendon on Sunday playing a very ill-advised for a senior um, game of pickleball. But um, I, as I left the house this morning, and Joe was asking me whether I thought I really should travel to Raleigh, and I said, it's going to take a lot more than this to keep me away from this moment. I've been friends with Tricia Cotham, even though we've been political opponents for many years. I've been good friends with her mother, who's uh, uh, now, I think, in her sixth or seventh term on the Board of County Commissioners in Mecklenburg County, where I served one time. Uh, and, and, and we have been in disagreement over political issues from time to time, but we've, we've always remained friends. Uh, and um, I'm glad to be here with a friend today. And I'm honored. Uh, I think Tricia is making the right decision. Uh, but I can tell you one thing, she is a strong woman, a strong leader, and, uh, and I intend, uh, I've, I've lived in Mecklenburg County, uh, as Tricia has all my life, until recently. I've moved to Waxhaw, but I still, my, my entire life has been in Mecklenburg County, and I can tell you this, Tricia Cotham is going to get all the support she needs in Mecklenburg County, and it will be from me personally, I can guarantee that too. We probably still will have disagreements from time to time. Uh, but uh, this latest development in which uh, the two major parties, or a major party, cannot abide dissenters, even on particular issues within its ranks, is something that is bad for America. Um, I've never seen that in the Republican Party. Uh, we've had our, our conversations internally, our debates, and we'll certainly continue to do that. But. Uh, but my presence here today is simply to, to uh, a, a vote of confidence for a good friend uh, who's always managed to keep the priorities in the right order. Uh, that, and at the top of the list is civility and service. And uh, everything comes uh, subordinate to that. So, Tricia, uh, congratulations to you. you. Welcome. And uh, I'm delighted to be here with you Thank today. You, my friend. Now I'll hobble out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Berger. 
So, um, Phil Berger, I'm here on behalf of the Republican Senate Caucus, and uh, we are pleased as we can be to represent, uh, to re uh, welcome uh, Representative Cotham to the uh, Republican Party. Uh, you know, we've known over the years that uh, she is someone that is that independent thinker, someone who uh, makes her decisions uh, based on what she thinks is right, uh, makes her decisions based on what she thinks is best for her constituents. And uh, it is an unfortunate thing that she is now uh, sort of the latest in a long line of folks who uh, can come before the public and say, you know, I didn't really leave the Democratic Party. It left me. And there are a lot of folks uh, in North Carolina that feel exactly the same way. It's one of the reasons that the Democratic Party in North Carolina continues to lose uh, members uh, in, uh, in ways that, uh, that are just historic in nature. Um, I've done a little reading over the last couple of days. Uh, I've seen some of the stuff that's on Twitter. I don't blame you. I wouldn't want to be associated with those people either. Um, it's, um, uh, it is um, one of the, uh, the things that uh, is unfortunate, and Representative uh, Bishop touched on it, that the, uh, the Democratic Party seems to value uh, ideological purity and uh, adherence to uh, whatever uh, the, uh, the, the superior um, individuals, uh, the governor or someone else in the party says is the right way to think. And uh, that is not uh, the American way, and that is something that will continue to lead to further uh, dissipation of membership in the Democratic Party. So, uh, Tricia, welcome. Uh, it's so glad to have you uh, with, uh, with the Republican Caucus. So glad for you to now be with uh, where you are philosophically and uh, where you are intellectually. So thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you for always being my friend. <laughs> Thank you. I'm um, Senator Vicki Sawyer. I'm here on behalf of the Republican women to welcome our newest addition, Tricia Cotham. You know, at a time when folks who elect us ask for their representatives to work across the aisle for the good of their district and to focus on making results and not headlines, Tricia stood up for the call. In her short time back at the General Assembly, she quickly rose to be one of the top legislators in the General Assembly and the most powerful Democratic legislator in the Charlotte region. For her efforts, she was rewarded with being shunned by her party, vilified by her caucus, and bullied by other women. Bullying so bad that I haven't seen the likes since I sat in sixth grade at Ms. Caldwell's class at Philo Middle School. I welcome Representative Cotham to the Republican Party. Now, we aren't perfect. In fact, we're a long way from that. But what I can promise you is that we have room for an independently minded, strong-willed woman who represents her constituents well. A woman who embodies what it means to govern and not to be governed. Welcome, Representative Cotham. Thank you. is our majority leader, John Bell. Hey, good morning, everyone, and, uh, and I'll be uh, brief in my remarks because like the House has already been said, just not everyone has said it, <laughs> so we're going to make sure that we say it. But uh, yesterday afternoon, the, uh, the Speaker and I had the, uh, the, the pleasure of introducing the 72nd member of the North Carolina House Republican Caucus, Representative Tricia Cotham. And today we get to officially welcome her to the caucus. The speaker said it very clear. In our caucus, freedom and liberty and independent thinking is valued. You vote your conscience, you vote your constituency, and if you can, you vote your caucus. We believe in that. We like strong-minded people with opinions, various backgrounds, and various ways of life to come into our caucus. We work hard to recruit those type of candidates to run as Republicans, which is the reason we've been extremely successful over the last 12 years. Representative Cotham, I respect your bravery. You have a backbone, there is no doubt. I respect your independency, and I want to officially welcome you as the 72nd member, that's a supermajority in case you're keeping count, <laughs> of the House Republican Caucus. Congratulations and welcome. Next is Representative Sane, our conference leader. 
Uh, great to be with you all today, and certainly great to support my friend, Patricia Cotham. First and foremost, as soon as I got to the house, I was appointed, uh, sat very near Patricia on the floor, and quickly just, you meet people, and they're, they're so friendly, and it doesn't matter their party, it's about people, and it's about the individual. And everything that we do, these, le these elected members here in this audience, everything that we do is about people, and we should never lose sight of that. And my colleague, whether she's a Democrat or a Republican, will never lose sight of that. I always tell our freshmen when they come in, one of the things that you must do is always, always be effective and represent your constituents. Whether Trisha Cotham's a Democrat or Republican, I know for a fact she is going to look out for the best interest of her constituents. So to the people in her district, they need to hear that. She is the same today as she was yesterday. And she's a strong, willed, smart, intelligent leader, period. And we're glad to welcome you to the Republican Party. Uh, I've wanted her to come for a long, long time uh, because she has been so effective and such an ally in the House. Uh, we love you, and, and we, we're certainly going to love having you in our caucus. I, you know, a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, as, as these attacks have happened to, to, to Representative Cotham, I've, I've watched someone who's normally smiling, someone who's normally happy, have a little concern on her face. You know, something just wasn't right. And, and as we talk through it, as friends, not as party people, as friends, I told her, we'd always have your back because we're friends first. And so she just joins a, a, a large group of already made friends and making new ones. So I am glad to serve in a party that welcomes Representative Trisha Cotham. Thank you, Representative Cotham. And Representative Hall, our uh, Destin Hall, our rules chair, any comments? Or? Um, again, I, I won't echo what everybody else has said, but um, I am uh, as pleased as everyone else that we have 72 members now. Uh, Tricia Cotham has been someone who is reasonable, who is moderate, who we've been able to work with uh, in this session. Her principles and her views have not changed. What has changed is the Democratic Party in North Carolina. As Senator Berger said, she hasn't left the party. The party has left her, and it is leaving reasonable people behind. We've heard a lot about that today, but one thing that I think is particularly troubling, some of the misogynistic and sexist accusations that have been put forth um, against Representative Cotham uh, is absolutely despicable. Uh, I hope that our friends in the media will call some of that out. Uh, from some of the folks who have made those accusations. Uh, but we move forward not worrying about that. Uh, as Leader Bell said, this lady has a backbone. Uh, she's going to get through it. We're going to get through it. Uh, and we're going to continue to enact great policy for North Carolina. That's right. <laughs> One final speaker before we start taking questions. Um, there is a man who served for years here in the North Carolina House who not only is a colleague but a close friend who has served Mecklenburg County well, served North Carolina well, and who is neighbors with Representative Cotham. I'd invite Representative Bill Brawley to come up and make a few comments, Bill. Say, so, Bill. Well, fortunately, I'm a moderately well good extemporaneous speaker because I didn't know I was speaking. I wasn't even sure I was going to be up front. The one thing I can say is you've heard Trisha talk about the things that happened to her and happened to her children and you're sitting there wondering is it really that bad in Mecklenburg County? It is because it happened to my children too and other Republican representatives have had their children attacked in the same way. One, in the western part of the state, it was so bad that he paid to move his ex-wife and his children out of the county that he represented to get his children out of the school system where they were harassed by their teachers. It's not something you've covered, but it's real. So when she tells you why she had to leave, I can say from my own experience, it does, in fact, happen.
So with that, you've heard a lot of great, uh, great comments, not only from, from Representative Cotham, but from her colleagues. Uh, and you actually got Senator Berger and I up here at the same time, too. That's a great thing. So I'm going to let her be the, the burger whisperer, I think. I'm going to send her over there. Uh, but and one of the things about her independent nature is, and, and you know, there may be times that uh, Representative Cotham may have to look at me and say, Speaker, I don't agree with your position. And you know what? That'll be fine. Because she can say that all she wants to. It, <laughs> as long as it's not an idea from him. But with that, uh, we'll be glad to take questions. If you, would, if you would, if you have a question, identify yourself and to whom you would like the uh, question addressed. So, go ahead. Uh, Brett Jensen, WBT. Representative Cotham, Mecklenburg County Democrat Party came out. Um, the Democrat Party out of D.C. came out, called you traitor, and said you should resign your position. They're going to be holding a press conference at noon today talking about you. What are your thoughts about that? That's why they're not in power when they treat individuals like that. Um, you can't have, everybody just can't be the same and do the exact same thing and agree the exact same way on every issue. What happened to the concept of a big tent party? What happened when we hear these ideas of we're inclusive, we're tolerant, we're so welcoming to everybody? No, you're not. You're welcoming until you don't go with everything and there's no room for negotiation. It's everything that is scripted. So I'm not surprised at all. And um, I think the country is getting sick and tired of that. I'm not going to fit into a box. I'm not here to push a button just because someone tells me to. And any legislator who shares that idea that they are here just to push a button, you are irrelevant. You need to be a person who can think for his or herself and that's disappointing. Instead of recognizing the strength of so many, they want to pick on their own and do as much damage as possible, but they will not damage me. Representative Cotham, uh, Brian Anderson, uh, pretty much reporter, I had a question. Um, there's been a lot of concern from the Democratic Party uh, about the future of abortion restrictions in the state, and I know you've previously shared your emotional personal story on the House floor back in 2015. How do you think about this issue going forward, and would you support a 13-week ban except in cases of rape, incest, and life? I'm not going to give any type of number on anything. I, there's a piece of a good advice I learned from a long time ago. Don't discuss legislation that's not before you. Um, I'm, I'm, so I'm not going to do that. As the Speaker said, as Senator Berger said, I am still the same person, and I am going to do what I believe is right and follow my conscience. I'm not going to be bullied around by those groups, and they know it. That's why they were the first to start these attacks on me from the very beginning. Um, I'm going to vote my conscience. I'm going to listen to others. I'm going to ask their opinion. I'm going to ask why, but most importantly, I'm going to look inside and I'm going to pray on this issue. And I know that's where I will find the answer, as I do on everything. Gary? Hold on a minute, Gary. It was along those lines, okay. but it seemed like have your views changed on abortion rights since you returned to the legislature or even since you uh, ran as a candidate last year? I'm still the same person who I am. If you go back into my history, you will note I was never someone that this was the biggest issue facing women in North Carolina. I believe women are much more. We're business owners. We cre help create economies. We raise families. We carry it all. And so to always be tried just to that tragic, hard topic is wrong because women are greater. And like I stated, I'm not going to go with, say, there's a week here or a week there. I'm not going to do that. And really, no one should. There's not a bill before us right now. I'm going to research the bill. I will talk to others. I will have these internal dialogues very, very much. Representative Cotham, Laura Leslie from WRAL. What Hello. do you say to the constituents who elected you as a Democrat, believing that you were going to uphold these democratic issues like abortion, like LGBTQ rights? Well, what has really changed? I still am going to stand strong on my convictions. 
but I'm not going to be pigeonholed into any one particular issue. And I made that very clear in our conversations that there are just some things I'm not changing on. And, you know, but we also need to just stop all the narrative and the vivitrol that I've seen when I was a Democrat on Republicans. You know, maybe getting to know people and not just reading that whatever rumor and something that is posted on Twitter. Um, actually get to know people and talk to them and try and have a dialogue. I've changed my positions on things throughout the years, and that made me a better legislator because I was willing to listen, to do my homework, to do research outside, to rely on policy experts in the, caucus, in the, in the party all over. But we should all be able to evolve, and we should not be shamed for learning new perspectives at all. Representative Reeves, Mary Helen Jones with Spectrum News. Did you speak with um, Representative Reeves or anyone in Democratic leadership, or did you feel the need to when you made that decision to become a Republican? I think when Representative Lee Reeves sent out a statement last week encouraging us to resign and or a primary challenge really showed the low blow of where we are in this institution, it's never been like this here. I've never <coughs> known a minority leader or majority leader, and I think Senator Berger would back me up on that to directly call mm -hmm. for a member of his or her own caucus. He's never talked to me off session. I've tried. I've reached out. I've offered to help. So I guess he gets his wish. Hey, Bill. You point to a piece of legislation that you think this switch will make a difference. You know, I, I, I can't say for certain. We have had, uh, I've been using the term earlier of a governing supermajority, and, and we've had that, and we, of course, now we have an outright supermajority. It makes it a little easier, by the way. Uh, but we have really worked very hard to work across the aisle to the, to the handful of, of centrist Democrats who are there to try to build policy agreements to have discussions and so there are you know I would suspect for example our budget that we're working on I, I, I already expected pretty well broad support of that when we get there I think that will continue but you know as far as other specific bills I don't want to get too much into that and go go there but I just think it's uh, a lot of the weighty issues many of you have interviewed me on this before I've told you on the a lot of issues that are going to come before us I have felt all along that we will have a supermajority, and I still feel that we will have, even with Representative Coffin now giving us an outright Republican supermajority, it will still be my goal to get folks to vote on the other side of the aisle for a number of policy initiatives. I'd rather not get into specifics right now, but uh, I think in the coming in the coming weeks you'll start seeing, uh, as, as we move through as we're doing, you'll see that. And I would predict today that you will see a strong bipartisan support of our state budget. And that, that is something, that is no small feat. So I think you will see us continue to build upon that. <clears throat> Matt Mercer, North State Journal, Representative Cotham. I think there's a misconception among some of the media outlets out of here that this was just about the veto override vote last week. Can you lay out the timeline from when you first announced you were going to seek to return to the legislature to this point? Um, see, you know, I left the legislature for deeply personal and family reasons. Um, wanted to get my child off to school and start kindergarten and had other things going on and I needed that break um, and that break was really good for me and when COVID hit you may not know I was hit three times severely by COVID very very sick um, the last time I was really I was in the hospital when I learned about this new seat I, I, I was so out of it that you know, with my health at that time. Um, so I didn't exactly know that seats said, you know, if there were new seats and um, just really prayed about it and thought, you know, is this, is this what I'm doing, God? Because I thought I was doing something over here. And then it just was like this perfect, amazing opportunity. And, uh, you know, in politics, you have to be able to take risks. And a lot of people can't do that. 
you have to be able to step out there and have courage and try. Mm -hmm. And also accept the fact that if you lose, as long as you stick to your principles and what you believe in, you are a winner. And so that was the start of this. When I came to the legislature, of course, after Thanksgiving and after December, um, you have a whole lot of people who want to catch up and talk. Um, and some warned me about the toxicity and the nastiness, was the word used repeatedly, that I would encounter. I do believe in giving everybody a fair chance. And so at the, on, the first and only caucus meeting I attended, I just did what I've always done and who I am. I brought a spread of cookies and treats and snacks and drinks and really trying to be a part of the team and um, wanted to help with freshmen. And at that meeting, I was labeled a freshman. I was assigned a freshman mentor. Um, I'm usually the one who mentors freshmen. And I was told no. And then I heard a lot of other things about whoever is chair of committees will have these what's called shadow <coughs> chairs. And that that person shadows the to often, except for three, uh, Republican chair to do all this work and research and report back to the caucus. And then there were all these work groups and work groups, and I kept asking, what are you doing about real policy? A work group, a small group, a talking group, how does that equate to getting something done in North Carolina and for helping our children read better? How does that help? No one seemed to really have that idea. It was just more about a meeting after meeting, policy after policy, but to no end result. I am a results-oriented person. I was raised by two entrepreneurs, and I am very proud of both of my parents and for the hard work that they put up in this life to build a big family business. So there's very different schools of thought. I'm certainly not going to be told what color to wear on certain days. I'm not going to be told that my hair is too long. I'm not going to be fashion policed by Democratic women. It's extremely hypocritical doing that. And it just kept turning. You know, I was appointed a gavel, which was not my first time having a gavel. Um, and instead of that being seen as any rational individual would see, that this could be good. We should be proud. I was shunned. I was called a traitor. You can't trust her. And then a shadow chair placed on me. On issues like school choice, like charters, we have to evolve. And I believe that the state is changing, especially after what they saw and experienced firsthand in their home with COVID and learning. One size fits all in education is wrong for children. It might be okay for adults, but I am about children. And so it was very disheartening when the Democrat Party didn't really want to talk about children. They had talking points from adults and adult organizations.